I think the superhero fatigue is really starting to get to everyone. In X-Men Apocalypse, the first mutant ever is reborn and he has plans for world domination and, well, you know, the X-Men have to stop him. Now, going into X-Men Apocalypse, you guys, I was so stoked for this movie because I loved First Class and Days of Future Past, so my excitement level was through the roof. And critics' reviews started coming out for the film, and honestly, they were very mixed and lukewarm. There were critics saying it's the best thing ever, and there were critics saying give it to Marvel because this movie's a tragedy. And I guess I have to thank those lukewarm reviews because I absolutely love this movie. Yes, it has its problems. It is not as good as First Class and Days of Future Past, but overall, I still really liked the movie and found it very entertaining. And if I had to say my favorite thing about this movie is its characters. Certain characters truly get moments to shine in this movie. I mean, Michael Fassbender as Magneto. I mean, he has been phenomenal in all these movies. But in this movie, man, they really bring out the feels for him. I mean, there's one moment in this movie. It's my favorite moment in the entire moment movie. And you feel the gut wrench power of it. And not only Michael Fassbender's performance, but just the circumstances of the scene. Also, I thought Sophia Turner killed it as Jean Grey in this movie. I thought she was phenomenal. And I even like Ty Sheeran as, you know, Cyclops. Maybe I'm biased, but I didn't feel like Jennifer Lawrence was, you know, phoning it in in this movie. But you're talking to a massive Hunger Games fan here, so I'm going to be biased on the subject matter. But this also leads into one of my biggest problems with X-Men Apocalypse, and that is, while some characters get truly great moments to shine, a lot of them come off very underused. And I particularly thought X-Men Apocalypse's Four Horsemen were very underused, particularly Angel and Storm. I mean, why have them in this movie? They don't get any real development, in my opinion. Particularly Storm, especially knowing that, you know, she's part of the X-Men family later on. It just feels like a wasted opportunity there. I thought in this movie to be very entertaining, and I was honestly fully invested into this movie, but my main problems with this movie truly come in the final act of this film. Honestly, when the when Apocalypse and the crap hits the fan, it just, the stakes just aren't there. And I think that I blame that particularly on the superhero fatigue. And I think that might be where a lot of these critics are coming from. We have six superhero movies in 2016. And honestly, I can totally see why so far each superhero movie is catering to a certain different type of audiences and why one person likes this movie over another person, another movie. And it just, it makes total sense. And I think it's starting to get to people's heads a little. And honestly, while watching this movie, I've seen a super movie. So when the big final showdown comes down, I can't help but feel like it's a bit bloated and over-exaggerated because I already know the end result. X-Men Apocalypse might not be the full package that First Class and Days of Future Past were, but it's still a very entertaining film with great action sequences and really cool character moments, even if its final act does feel a bit bloated and the stakes just aren't quite there. As the score goes, I'm going to give X-Men Apocalypse a three and a half out of five. So you guys, did you see X-Men Apocalypse? What'd you think of it? Of course, let's talk about it in the comments section below. And until next time, I'm the Slash Movier and you guys have just been Slash.